Hello, welcome to episode 33 of Live.withcode.uk. This week is all about validation. So checking what the user types in and seeing if it is valid or not. Um, and it's Mother's Day this weekend. Um, so we're gonna have a, um, a bit of a Mother's Day theme. We're gonna draw some flowers. Um, I think mums and dads as well have done a fantastic job at looking after um, you whilst you've been working at home. And it's been um, really good to welcome you back into the classroom from this week. Our program will allow you to choose how many flowers you'd like for a Mother's Day card, what color you'd like. Let's go for some yellow daffodils. Um, and then it should draw um, that number of um, flowers. But most importantly, if you specify a number that's too small, like zero, it doesn't allow it. It's invalid. It's not a valid number. A number that's too big is also not accepted. Or if you type in something that's not a um, an integer, it also doesn't accept that without crashing. So we have a range of acceptable values. So this is a range check. It's validation and the type of validation is a range check. Let's go for three. Similarly here, but it's not a range. It's not between a minimum and a maximum. This time, um, it doesn't actually understand how to draw blue um, colors, but it does understand things like yellow or pink or um, things like that. So there's a certain list of acceptable values. And we use a lookup check to see, have I put in one of those values? So a lookup check, it looks up from a list to see if we've got something sensible from that list. Okay, so let's get started with the drawing. We're gonna use turtle graphics for the, the drawing. So we've got a canvas here that goes from minus 200 to 200 in the X direction, minus 200 to 200 and zero, zero in the middle. We'll use turtle, um, so the turtle module, lowercase t, has a turtle class, capital T, that we can use to create a turtle object, um, just lowercase t on its own. Uh, and then with that lowercase t, that t object, we can do things like move forward by any amount of pixels, and this little turtle crawls along the floor by that amount. And we're gonna use that to do all of our drawing. So I would like to do something like draw flower, um, telling Python where to draw it, so an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. Um, I'd like to say how big it's going to be. I'd like to say how many um, petals it has and what color it is, so something like that. Um, but Python doesn't know how to draw a flower yet, so we should probably make it do that. So um, we'll define it. Def to define. We'll define a procedure, which is just some reusable code with a name that does something useful. Um, and then we need to describe what these values are. So the order is important. The first value is the X coordinate, then the Y coordinate, then the size, the number of petals, and the color. Um, so irritatingly, I'm gonna to have to stick with the American spelling here because um, when we do things like uh, t.color to set the color, we're stuck with the American spelling here. So for consistency, I'll use the um, American spelling throughout. Unless we're asking the user a question, um, I'll use British spelling there. So we want to set the color and then draw um, a flower. Uh, so um, let's change to that color. So at the moment, it's just changed to yellow um, and it's moved to that position um, because we told it to move across here. What I'd like it to do is teleport, so go to X, Y, um, which looks fine here, but if I go to a different coordinate, um, notice it draws whilst it's moving, and I don't want that to happen. So before I go, let's um, lift the pen up, and then once we've moved, we can put the pen back down again. So we teleport, we change color. For the petals, we'll use a loop, so the each, each petal is just going to be a circle, uh, sorry, a circle, um, and we can draw it in any particular size. So we're going to have a, oh my goodness, that's far too big. Let's maybe reduce it down in size by a factor of five. And it'd be nice to fill that in. So t.beginfill says I'm going to draw something that needs filling in. Then we uh, draw it, and then after we've drawn it, we can end fill to actually do the, the coloring in. So that's drawn one of the petals. Um, so all of this I'd like to be repeated however many times we want to have petals for. So we'll use a for loop, for i in range petals. 
and then all of this code needs to be repeated that many times. So we are drawing all the different petals, but they're all in the same place. So we just need to rotate a little bit. Now there's 360 degrees in a circle. We've got this many petals, so we want to chop those 360 degrees into however many si um, sized pieces we want, um, which is determined by how many petals we want. So 360 divided by however many petals means um, then we can then draw them all going around a bit like a flower. Next, I'd like to draw a stem. Um, so I think perhaps the best way to do that is before we draw the flower, <coughs> excuse me, um, let's go to the same x coordinate but y minus size. So it goes down a bit. Um, then we'll lift the pen up. T.color, let's always draw it in green. Um, and uh, so we should have a stem going up, but it would be nice if that stem was a little bit thicker. Um, so just before we go to XY, we can set the width of the line to 10. Um, and there we go. So we've got our flower. Um, now we get to the important bit, which is asking the user a question so that we can validate that input. So sorry that took a little while to draw the flower. Um, now the important bit is asking the question and validating. So to ask a question we use input. How many flowers would you like? And we're going to do a range check here. And if you do a range check, you should always tell the user what the minimum value is, and I'll say 1, um, up to the maximum value, and I'll say 10. So the user knows what the acceptable range is. We need to, con um, to convert that to an integer. So we'll use the int function. And we'll want to store the result. So I'll call it flowers. Um, and then we can use that in a loop, for i in range flowers, and then this line of code is going to be repeated that many times. So if I want five of them, it will draw five flowers, but it will draw them really slowly, and they'll all be in the same place. Um, so let's speed it up first of all. t.speed0 will go as fast as it can. And then it would be nice if the flowers were in different positions and different sizes. So let's have an x coordinate, random.rand int for a random integer between minus 200 all the way on the left and 200 all the way on the right. Uh, I don't think that will work because we haven't imported the random module yet. So always do your imports at the top. You only need to import a module once, even if you use it lots. Um, so we've generated a random x coordinate, but we're not using it. It's always at um, 100. So we put x in there. We should have five flowers in five positions. It just looks a bit weird because they're all the same color. Sorry, all the same size. So we can change this to a random number as well. Size equals random dot rand. Oops. So let's go for anything between 75 and 150. You can change that if you want bigger or smaller ones and pop that in there. Okay, so we've got random flowers random size, random um, coordinates. Um, but if we type in a number that's too small, it doesn't do anything about it. We haven't got any validation involved yet. And also, even worse, if you type in something that isn't an integer, it's going to crash. And we need to get around both of those problems. So in order to do that, first of all, we'll set a default value, a value that it is um, originally. So we'll set flowers to zero, which is outside of our valid range. It's too small. Then we can say, whilst our number of flowers is less than the minimum that we want, um, and, um, sorry, or the number of flowers is more than um, the maximum that we want, we'll just ask again. So now this time, we can have a number too small doesn't matter how big we go for, um, but it will keep asking. We can go for a number too big, but it will stop asking when we give it a sensible value. We've still got a problem that if we type in some text, it will crash. Um, but that's not too much of a problem, because now that we've got this for loop in here, we can say, try doing this. And I know that sometimes you might not be able to convert it to an integer, 
But when you can't, instead of failing, just do this instead. Um, so uh, please um, type a number. So this time we type in some text. It gives us a sensible error message, but it carries on without crashing. That's so much better. So eight flowers. Here we go. So the next bit of validation is going to be um, a lookup check. Um, I'd like to be able to look up a list of colors um, and only allow a pre-agreed um, list of colors. So let's ask the question first. Input what color flowers, oops, can't spell, flower um, would you like? Uh, and this time I'm not going to say which colors. I'll just let them type it in. Um, I'll use the American spelling for anything in code, um, but the British spelling for the user, because um, the user doesn't need to know that Python only speaks American um, language. So this time I'd like five um, red flowers, but we're not using that value yet. So we need to remember to pass that value. Instead of the literal value yellow, let's pass this um, variable value in here. So I think this should work. If I say five blue flowers, it works. But if we try five um, pink flowers, oops, sorry, if I try um, five purple with pink spots, um, it doesn't really understand that. So it just goes back to what it does understand, which is black. Um, so for this, let's again start with a value that it doesn't understand. So we'll set a default value to just an empty string. There's nothing in there. Then we keep looping until we get something that we want. So whilst our color is not in this list, so we'll allow red, we'll allow blue, we'll allow pink, um, and we'll allow yellow. Oops. Um, then we keep asking. So let's try five of, oh, I haven't got green in there, so it should make us ask again. Um, but red is in the list and we'll get, we'll get some red flowers. The last thing that I'll do at the moment, if you shout, oops, I want five, go away, stop it. Um, just five, thank you very much. If you shout with capital letters, that value is not in our list. So it thinks that we haven't put anything sensible in even though it is a sensible value, if we convert it to lowercase. So I'm just going to pop that in to make sure that it's whatever the user types in goes into lowercase. Let's try. Fab, we've got five red flowers. So today's video, we've talked through how to get user input, how to do a range check, and how to do a lookup check. Um, and we've also drawn a, um, a card or something that you can quickly turn into a Mother's Day card. And I'll pop some challenges down at the bottom um, for you to be able to work through. Um, let's have a look. So some of them is some of these are nice and easy. First of all, um, change it so that you can draw up to 50 fly 50 flowers. You'll need to change the value here, but also more importantly, the value in the um, the validation. Um, I'm going to take this out so it doesn't understand blue flowers. So one of your challenges is just to put that value back in so that you've got an extra value in your lookup check. Um, and then you could also customize it so that you've got a, um, a nice picturesque background so that you can turn it into a card that says um, Happy Mother's Day or something like that. Okay, so remember that there are links in the description to um, the online learning activities. You can do these as part of the competition if your school has signed up for the free um, compete.withcode.uk accounts, um, or you can just find them all without any login on live.withcode.uk. Um, so all the very best, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.